Hey guys, it's a rainy, windy, messy day here. Um, as I personalize my space uh, more and more, I brought some of my, my books over uh, for my little office area. I thought it would be a good time to go over some of my favorite books and ones I recommend. I really don't have any up there that that I don't appreciate and really love. So we'll get started off with one of my all-time favorites. This is Honey Farming by R.O.B. Manley. It's, it's a different kind of beekeeping book. So there's a lot of how-to in here if you know how to pick it out. Um, this guy, he was over in, in England, and he basically just goes through how he built up his commercial beekeeping operation. Uh, a lot of the things that he did and figured out are really applicable for sideliner level beekeepers, um, because commercial beekeeping in Europe is much different than commercial beekeeping in the United States. Um, excellent book. Lots of, of real gems in here. Uh, definitely top two recommended book out of my list. Oh, again, Honey Farming, R.O.B. Man. Okay, next up. This is my number one favorite book. It's by... GM Doolittle. Everything GM Doolittle wrote to me is gold. Uh, this book is Management of Out Apiaries. Now this is not a huge book, but whew, it's so good. So this man, way back in the day, uh, he was doing some amazing things with honey production, uh, which was easier at the time, and just management and efficiency. Uh, he has so much to offer in knowledge about nucleus colonies, how to use them, uh, grafting. Uh, he's the father of grafting. Um, so much good information in this book. Uh, I recommend that everyone reads this. It's not necessarily, uh, well, it's not necessarily, it's not a beginner book. Uh, this is more for somebody trying to streamline some things, get inspiration, uh, and figure out how to work efficiently and maintain their out yards. So, great book. Uh, this, I, I really like this guy. His, uh, it's J.J. Wilder. And he was a Huge southern beekeeper way back in the day. Um, it's like pre-auto, all this stuff. I mean, it's a long time ago. This man was a businessman. I mean, he has lots of really good uh, stories and inspiration on, on how to run your business even. If, again, these aren't how-to books. Uh, you read them and you, and you pull from them. Um, but this guy, he's got a, he writes with a, with an arrogance, but it's easy to take. He, he's, uh, he's got a personality, and it just comes through in his writing uh, so much. He has a few different books. This one, Southern Bee Culture, it uh, kind of lays out more his management system, uh, how he did things, how he grew, um, and it is, it is worth a read. It's, it's a good book. This, if you're into queen rearing and, and raising bees, um, then you're probably like me and you, you like to read people's methods and what they did and the research that they had. and um, You find a lot more of that in the older books. This particular book is Henry Alley and it's improved queen rearing. It's not a must read. It's just uh, 
something to add to your your mental library and notes to pull out and you may find something here that really inspires you that's usually what happens to me and hey that's what beekeeping is all about you find something you get inspired you experiment give it a try uh, see how it works and, and if it works great awesome share it with everybody and if it doesn't well we got a million of those that that didn't work out i know i've, I've burnt a, enough equipment to fill this room of experiments and really uh just stupid things that i thought were going to reinvent the wheel so i am a comb honey producer on a small scale it's a passion of mine i love producing comb honey uh, this book was recommended it's a roger a morse comb honey production and i won't lie to you there is a uh, there's very little in this book that I found to be helpful, um, but I wasn't starting off when I when I got this book. I wasn't starting from a, a beginner level with it. I already had a system in place and um, was successful with producing uh, large amounts of comb honey. So it's it's a good read. It's a little dated. Um, it's a lot dated, but if you're you're just wanting to read some on comb honey, pick it up. This is uh, another book on comb honey, and it's by Carl Killian, Honey in the Comb, and it also was recommended uh, for a comb honey book. Um, Again, it is a uh, it's dated, but interesting book. It's it's a little bit better than than the other comb honey book. Um, again, if you're not interested in comb honey, I'd probably skip over this one. But if you do have interest in comb honey production, there's some awesome pictures in here. Uh, really neat stuff. And again, you may stumble on somebody's technique that's fallen out of practice um, that will really work and do a great job for you so they're worth a read uh, first lessons in beekeeping by day Dan. this is a good read this is a very good read um, i do recommend this for beginners I recommend this for anyone. It is uh, kind of a catch-all book. It has a, a wide number of subjects. Uh, it's, a, it's a basic book. It doesn't know, go into great detail about many things at all. But it is very good, very good information from a very good source. Again, it's, a, it's an old book, but this is a must-have in your beekeeping library. This is a favorite of mine. This is uh, another basic book. I recommend this to uh, new beekeepers uh, or any level beekeeper. This is uh, another very old book by a very good source. It's How to Keep Bees and Sell Honey. And it is a Kelly's book. Uh, I'm not sure who wrote it. Oh yeah, Walter T. Kelly did write it. So. This book was given to me by uh, an old man when I lived in Virginia. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how old this copy is, but you can still buy these. Uh, this is a really good book. It's a really good book focused on, on honey production and selling honey and marketing your honey. Uh, it's an older book, but I, I really don't find it that dated. There's a lot of applicable things in here. Um, this is a this is a great book. This is another must have in your library. I just put this in here because I got it in the mail. Um, honestly, I'm I haven't read this. I'm assuming this is uh, just going to be very um, 
basic. Well, I said very basic, but there's some pretty scientific stuff in here for the most part. But uh, it's just not big enough to be very specific on anything. I think it's a kind of a catch-all basic thing. Uh, I took the the Master Beekeepers course uh, for Tennessee there, and it's a good class. It's a very basic class. So I, I can't say yay or nay on this. This is a very interesting book if you're a southern beekeeper. And even if you're not, you're just interested in plants and honey. This is Beekeeping in the South, a handbook on seasons, methods, and honey flora of the 15 southern states by Kenneth Hawkins. Again, this is, this is an older book. Um, but it's really neat and, and it talks on some really good stuff uh, you can get some inspiration in here on older methods uh, you may have noticed that single brood chamber, single brood chamber uh, beekeeping is, is a popular technique now um, it's seen a uh, resurgence it used to be the only way bees were kept in the south. Uh, now you, you know, I guess it's been around a long time in other climates. Uh, you see more northern beekeepers talking about it as well. Um, when I first started keeping bees, everybody was just preaching on the double deep, and uh, you still hear it in a, in a lot of clubs, double deeps, double deeps. Uh, but single brood chamber management is receiving a lot more attention. Uh, and if you're interested in that, I recommend any of these old Southern books, uh, books on Southern beekeeping. You will find some really interesting techniques, management styles, um, and things like that. And they paid more attention to flora when these older books were written. Um, I find most modern beekeeping books... Now, I'm generalizing, but I find most modern beekeeping books to be uh, very redundant with uh, just a bunch of regurgitated material in it and, and not a lot of high quality stuff. And they seem to skip over the, the plants quite a bit. Uh, in the old books, they really hit on those and you can find a lot of that great information in these older books. I recently read this one. This is a new book. It's uh, Russian Honeybees by Thomas E. Renderer and Stephen Coy. Uh, if you're into bee breeding and genetics, this is a, a, a great read. Uh, if scientific books bore you, this is not your book. Uh, there is, there's a lot of data in this book. Uh, amazing data. Really good information on... Uh, the mite resistance and other things in Russian honeybees, uh, how they're bred, how they keep the lines separate, how they maintain those lines. Um, it's just a cool book if that kind of thing interests you, and it, it does me. So it was, it was a good book. It's a little bit pricey, I'll be honest with you. I think this is like a, a $40 book. and uh, If you're not into that, probably spend it somewhere else, but... If those things do interest you, it is worth it. It's a good book. Must have in your beekeeping library. Again, GM Doolittle. Anything and everything Doolittle has written is just gold to me. So this is scientific queen rearing as practically applied if you have any interest in rearing queens, uh, and even if you don't, you just want to understand it better, this book, this is the book from the greatest beekeeper of all time, in my opinion. Yes, even over Langstroth, by far. Uh, queen Rearing Book, Better Queens by Jay Smith. Great book. Uh, Mr. Smith raised very nice queens, very well-fed queens. This book 
will teach you so much on nutrition, uh, how the importance in nutrition and sail builders and raising quality queens. Uh, it's a it's a must have book for that if you're into queen rearing. It's really good. Uh, he has some interesting equipment as well that he used for feeders and, and other things. So uh, I don't use that kind of equipment, but it still is interesting concepts. He's a, a great writer and storyteller. There's some little anecdotes in here. And uh, it's an it's a easy read. It's an easy read by a, a great beekeeper, great, great queen river. And if you would like to learn more about cell builders, and nutrition as far as queen rearing goes this is your book uh, and i i do think this is a must-have in uh experienced beekeepers library this is a new purchase i got this at the hive life conference it's a queen rearing bee breeding by harry h ladlow and robert e page jr now i have not completed this book so I will hold off on recommendations this is a very um, database scientific book again so if queen rearing is not your thing you're going to probably struggle through this um, I find it fascinating so I bought it uh, this come from the Wickwash press check those guys out um, they have just an amazing library of hard to find uh, beekeeping books and they're really nice people queen rearing essentials queen rearing essentials Lawrence John Connor this book was given to me at the Memphis Area Beekeepers Association meeting by Eddie Nunn uh, he was flipping through it, and I said, oh, that's a that's a neat book. I'd like to have a copy of that. And he just gave it to me. He's a really nice guy, a good friend of mine. Um, great book. Really, anything by Connor is going to be extremely informative with lots of great pictures, lots of great information. Um, it's a must-have in your library. It's just the pictures are amazing, amazing pictures. You really get a good idea. Um, easy read. Great book. This is another Connor book. An Essentials book. B6 Essentials. Uh, if you are into queen rearing, this is a good book for you. Uh, if, if you're not really in, that interested in that, you may get a little bored with this book, but if that's your thing, again, you're going to be fascinated by it. Like I said, all Connor books are extremely informative with lots of amazing pictures. That, like, where do they get this, you know? You can always tell with, with their books that the extreme amount of effort was put in there to make something concise. Uh, informative and just the uh, highest quality photos great book I do recommend this book uh, if you're not into queen rearing then probably skip it increase essentials it's another Connor book uh, again same as all the others very good, very informative book. Lots of pictures. This book will get you in trouble if you are a new beekeeper. Okay? Um, read it. Understand these different methods. But uh, temper it. Because he's going to give you lots of good information that's going to give you a lot of confidence. But uh, you really need the experience to go along with it. So, again, this is a great book. But don't let it get you in trouble. Now, I have a few Brother Adam books. Uh, you can get all Brother Adam's books from the Wickwash Press. Brother Adam was an amazing beekeeper. He contributed so much 
to queen rearing and beekeeping in general. Uh, I love everything that he's put out. Honestly, he is a really, really dry read uh, for me. He, it can be difficult to get through his, his books. Uh, that's just the honesty of it. But the information is so good that it, it's worth the struggle. Uh, this particular book is Breeding the Honeybee. If you're into queen rearing and bee breeding, this is a must. So, good book. I am going to skip one and go to this one. Now, this is my favorite Brother Adam book that was the easiest for me to get through. This is In Search of the Best Strains of Bees. So if you're a bee nerd like I am and you're fascinated by um, varieties of bees and sub varieties and the geography, uh, where they came from, what their uh, attributes were, their characteristics, this is a fascinating book. Um, he talks about his travels around the world searching for the best bees that he made the Buckfast bee from. Just really good. This book is recommended by a lot of people. It is a good book for me. I struggled to get through it. Um, in this book, he outlines his management styles and his techniques, and they, they don't fall in line with what I do or how I like to work my bees. Uh, it's always great seeing other people's management styles and seeing their equipment, seeing what they're doing um, to get inspiration from. And you want to get inspiration from the best, mostly, you know, and, and he, he was a very successful beekeeper. This book here is more a pamphlet. I, I, I loan it out quite a bit, so it's gotten pretty worn. Um, it's Swarm Traps and Bait Hives, The Easiest Way to Get Bees for Free, McCartney Taylor. Uh, when I got this book, I had a different opinion on swarm bees than I do now. Uh, I've really changed my stance on free bees, um, swarms, and swarming genetics. Uh, complete opposite of where I was during this time. Uh, still, this is a good book. And he talks a lot about understanding the bee if, if you can pick it out of here like what what kind of cavity are bees looking for where are bees looking to go um, so it, it's an interesting read this is one of my absolute favorite books period um, can't recommend it enough. It is an old book. It's Honey Plants of North America by John H. Lovell. This book, it there's just a wealth of information. It's an encyclopedia of honey plants in North America. Um, it is an old book, but we are, we're not getting new plants. So uh, definitely still, still relative. I go to this book all the time just to read it, learn more, different areas. Amazing book. It, it belongs in every beekeeper's library. This is a, another new book from the Hive Life Conference. It's Garden Plants for Honeybees by Peter Lintner. Um, it has amazing photos in it. It's, um, it's kind of a calendar book. It goes month to month. Um, and you have to, you have to understand where your area is and, and have a basic understanding of what's in bloom and how your area is. 
but it's a it's a great book with really good pictures. Um, I like it. I wish it had a little more information in it, but that's what I got Honey Plants of North America for. It's a good book. So I'm from Southwest Virginia. It's on the border of Tennessee and Eastern Kentucky and Southern West Virginia. Uh, also Western North Carolina. We're right there in the tip of Virginia and you, in the Cumberland Mountains. And um, It's a different area. It's cold country. This book interested me because of that. This book is called Flower Power, Establishing Pollinator Habitat, uh, Tammy Horn Potter. So this book talks about a program that they have uh, for placing bees and sourcing beekeeping jobs for um, out-of-work coal miners, uh, turning strip mine areas into bee habitat. So it's an interesting read. I have... I have found some errors in this book uh, related to trees and pollen, uh, but it's, a, it's an interesting book. And if you have interest in those kind of projects uh, and creating pollinator habitat, it's, it's a good read. This section here is mostly uh, just on plants. I have a book on grafting. Uh, I have some homesteading books, some fruit books, um, just for fixing stuff around, uh, just to get inspiration, ideas on how to work with that. This is a, a wildflower field guide. So this isn't going to necessarily tell you what bees will work, but if you're out and about and you see the bees working something, then this can identify it for you. So it's a really good great book so this is the national audubon society first field guide wildflowers and i recommend this so it's a great field guide and like i said it's not going to tell you what's great for bees but if you see the bees out working it then you know how to figure out what it is i hope that you guys can find some good books from from my recommendations and what I have here uh, if you have any recommendations for me let me know leave them in the comments and I'll check them out I, I love books I love good books uh, check out Whipwas Press if you want any of these selections I'm pretty sure 90% of those you can get through them um, and let me know what you think about it thank you